Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch inside and out, reach out to Team Also at the 1916company.com for purchase pricing and availability questions concerning this watch. Today, we're discussing something that was built in limited numbers from 2008 to 2012 in white gold. This is reference 5445-04, the IWC Vintage Portuguese Handwound 1939, a watch that gets as close as we can to the original 1939 reference 325, a purpose-built oversized dress watch powered by a pocket watch movement. And it is big, 44 millimeters in diameter and thin, 9.9 millimeters thick, from lug tip to lug tip, 51.5 millimeters with a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. We'll throw this watch on my wrist of 16 centimeters circumference and you will find that it fits, but barely. This is the biggest watch I could wear. And I would say I have the smallest wrist that can wear this watch. So the timepiece is broad, and you can see from over the top, which sort of exaggerates the width of every watch, that the lugs are right out to the edge of my wrist. But if you look at this down the barrel angle, which is always the definitive one, you can see I've got a little bit of clearance, so I can pull this off, and by pull it off, I mean put it on. It is also thin. As a dress watch should, it'll slide effortlessly underneath the cuff. That is one dimension in which this watch is not larger than life. Now, in white gold, it's got a satisfying weight to it and a strap to match. Upscale, we've got medium scale alligator leather in medium brown with a slight gloss finish. We've got a monotone stitch. We've got a sheer cut edge that's lacquered for refinement, calfskin on the bottom, and a brand new IWC factory strap with no crimping and no gouging. We've got a buckle that's made of white gold like the watch, really gray gold, more on that in a moment, and it incorporates a combination of polish and satin finish for nuance. You can see there's a little B in there, so this buckle made by Brogioli, which is the longtime supplier of buckles and bracelets to IWC. Now, taking a quick look at the case, you can see some of the details here, including a concave case back. Note that this is a Portuguese. Or some people ask, is it a Portuguese or a Portuguese? And it's both. It was a watch originally commissioned by the Portuguese importers of IWC in the late 30s. And because IWC is in Schaffhausen, Switzerland, where they speak German up in the northeast of the country, Portuguese is how they say Portuguese. So you can call it either one. But if you were at IWC, Portuguese is how it would be described. The watch is simple and true to history. You can see the case band very narrow with blended lugs. Despite the huge disparity in size, the original Patek Philippe reference 96 and the IWC Portuguese 325 came from the same school of form follows function 1930s design, which is why the Portuguese looks like a huge 96. We have the motto crown, Probus Cafusia, a good solid watch made in Schaffhausen. We have a very minimal bezel that has several facets stepped and stacked to diminish the visual mass. They are polished for effect and contrast with the case flank. The lug hoods are polished. And then we have this bubble-like sound and it is a sapphire designed to evoke a late 1930s, early 40s plexiglass. The dial, or doise, or sort of anthracite metallic sunburst, is very true to history, whereas many IWC Portuguese models do feature some sort of a date complication. Here, we're going back to the origin of the species with a railroad track for minutes, sub-seconds, leaf hands, and vertically arrayed Arabic numerals. We have inner and outer concentric profiles, with the outer one being the scale against which the minutes are read. You can see that the leaf or foy style hands are extremely long, and that the indices and the numerals are applique and high polished for an upscale sheen. You can also see that the sub-seconds is slightly countersunk with its own mini railroad track and then a concentric pattern internally. The watch does feature hacking or stop seconds. And it's important to realize just how rare the Portuguese was prior to the 90s. Although an icon through much of the mid to late 20th century, only about 600 to 700 Portuguesers were actually made between 1939 and the 1993 Jubilee at which it was resurrected as a regular offering in the catalog. So a little bit like the Chagere Le Coult Reverso, it was something that was well known and revered, but rarely sold, primarily because like the Reverso, it was so unusual. A huge dress watch was wasn't what people were looking for through most of the 20th century. The reason it was huge was because the gentlemen Rodriguez and Chacher 
Terra, the Portuguese importers of IWC, they wanted a wristwatch that was as accurate as a pocket watch. And the only way to do that in an era when big movements were the most accurate, it was to create a purpose-built, oversized wristwatch for a pocket watch movement. There was no shortcut. It had to be a pocket watch caliber to achieve the desired accuracy. And while that is no longer necessary today, IWC has gone and created a pocket watch movement for this model. Now, of course, there were officers' watches that were converted from pocket watches during World War I in the 20s and 30s, but the original idea at the Portuguese design team level was that it was going to be a wristwatch from the outset, which is why it didn't look like a pocket watch converted to a wristwatch. This movement, 37.8 millimeters in diameter, this is caliber 98295 from the long-running 98 succession, of IWC pocket watch caliber, starting with the original 98. So it's huge. It's manual wind. It's a 46 hour power reserve, 18 joules and chronometer style adjusted in five positions. It also features an overcoil hairspring bent by hand for concentric breathing that is consistent timekeeping in any position. And if you look adjacent to the balance, you can see the world's largest hacking lever, maybe ever. It's really cool. You can also see that it features uh, poising masses on the rim. So while you could theoretically use this F.A. Jones-inspired Jones Arrow Index for fine-tuning, most of the adjustments are supposed to be performed using that mass and its counterpart on the opposite side of the balance. Now, about this Jones Arrow Index, in 1868, American F.A. Jones was the founder of IWC. And this enormous extended index, which transits from the balance cock to the three-quarter plate, this was used for fine timing adjustments in the era before free-sprung balances. So this watch actually has elements of both. Now, taking a look, it's very pocket watch-like because we have a crown wheel, a ratchet wheel. We have a center wheel, third wheel, fourth wheel, escape wheel, and then a huge balance that's almost the radius of the movement, beating at 2.5 hertz. So like I said, this is what a pocket watch caliber looks like. It's almost a great case study in, in how a basic mechanical movement works because you can see everything from the input of the energy through to the escapement itself. Now you can see solarization on the crown wheel as well as the ratchet wheel. We have this pocket watch style click with a click spring that's enormous arcing and swan-like and you can see how that click actually extends when you turn. It's designed to prevent the barrel from running backwards. Screw heads are polished, and you can see that in addition to a pocket watch style three-quarter plate, we have a beautiful bevel on the edges of the bridges. The screw heads are polished. There's engine turning on the base plate, and then we have little golden chaton cups reminding us that in the era of F.A. Jones, golden chaton cups would first be used to press the jewels securely, and those precision chaton would then be inserted into the bridges. It was a two-step process because pressing jewels directly into bridges at the time was not a terribly precise matter. It could warp the bridge, it could damage the jewel. Today, it's here for evocative reasons. Then finally, we have beautiful narrow stripes across the bridges, and you can see how they're perfectly aligned from the balance cock to the three-quarter plate. A beautifully made watch in the most august traditions of IWC Schaffhausen. 30 meters water resistance, so don't swim with it, but this is a dress watch through and through. Reach out to Team Also at the1916company.com for purchase and pricing details.